Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is a regular meeting of City Council, and there's a bunch of people in the audience that are here for a special recognition, a special honor that we're giving out this evening to honor some local athletes. Um, this is the scarf for the official scarf for the International Children's Games in Kelowna, 2011. And we have some people that represented Coquitlam here in the audience. Uh, they attended the fifth annual International Children's Winter Games uh, from January 26th to 31st. The event had over 40 cities representing more than 20 countries participating in various winter sports. The Coquitlam delegation consisted of 26 athletes and seven coaches participating in boys hockey, boys and girls curling, female figure skating. End result was that Coquitlam tying for sixth place overall in the medal standings with one gold, one silver, and one bronze. And many of them are here today, so we'll begin by let, perhaps checking out some of the photos from the event. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Coquitlam Curling Club was represented at the event, as was the Coquitlam Skating Club. The Coquitlam Minor Hockey Association. And, and of course, there is a social aspect to the event as well. What we'd like to do is invite the um, people who are here this evening up to receive certificates on behalf of the city, and we thought that the best way of doing that would be to do it by event. So I'd like to uh, invite the curlers up first. Uh, this is Team Hawes, and on here this evening are Desiree Hawes, uh, Megan Daniels, Jamie Lynn, and Angelique Miller, who finished with a gold medal. I'd also like to ask Team Habkirk, who involves Kyle Habkirk, Nicholas DeMarco, Nicholas Umbach, and Kento Sato, who finished with a silver medal, to come forward at this time. And I'll also ask uh, Councillor McDonnell, who's the Chair of the Recreation, Sport and Culture uh, Standing Committee, to join me in, uh, in these honours. The second group of athletes to recognize are from figure skating. I'd like to invite uh, Larkin Osman, who finished with a bronze medal, followed closely by teammate Larissa Horobeck, to come forward with their coaches as well. Next is our hockey representatives. This was the Coquitlam Chiefs Bantam A2 team, which had some great competition with teams from Austria, Germany, and Ontario. The head of delegation was Brad Walton, who is president of the Coquitlam Minor Hockey Association and a member of the Coquitlam Sports Council. Uh, 
I have the uh, certificates here <laughs> in order that we may read out the names uh, as we call people forward. Well, the uh, certificates were over here before. So. They're, they're <laughs> last minute change of plans. Uh, I'd like to invite, uh, well, I'd like to invite the whole group forward, but we'd like to recognize uh, Jacob Severson, uh, Justin Cannon, uh, Jared Puzzlebaum, uh, Andrew Walton, Max von Stream, Mark Ledlin, uh, Matthew Jung, Derek Fong, San Chung, Trevor Chernoff, Sam Bonark, Bonark, Adam Rhoda, Cameron Williams, Nathan Washington, Jacob Chauvar, Maximilian Fritz, Joshua uh, Fantillo, uh, Nicholas Allegrini, Peter Mandoli, Brad Walton, and Michael Barron. Now I do want to mention part of the reason we do that is because City Council has invested a lot in uh, uh, taxpayers resources in amateur sports facilities and in fitness and amateur sport in our community. We want to we do like to acknowledge those uh, athletes that go forward and represent our community and show excellence uh, and when they come back we do like to acknowledge them. So on behalf of all of Council we acknowledge you and thank you very much for participating in these games and representing us so well and bring home the gold, silver, and bronze. Thank you so much. Now, any of you who want to stay for the rest of the meeting, it's going to be riveting, exciting. It's going to be some of the best television you've ever watched. No? No, really. It'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do something to improve our ratings. <laughs> Thank you very much um, to both of the rest, both of the people that stayed. Um, Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. Item two is the minutes of the regular council meeting held Monday, February 7th. The recommendations to approve those minutes. Moved by Councillor Lynch, second by Councillor Nicholson. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item three is the minutes of the Recreation, Sports and Culture Standing Committee meeting of Monday, February 14th. Recommendations to receive those minutes. Second. Move by Councillor Sikora, second by Councillor 
uh, Robinson. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Councillor Asmussen. Next item. Next item. Oh, my apologies. Next item, item 3.3, .3, concerns uh, park naming. This is a site at uh, 3300 block of Millard Avenue. Recommendations that council endorse the name Millard Orchard Park for the new neighborhood park under development in the 3300 block of Millard Avenue. Second. Second. Moved by Councillor McDonnell, second by Councillor Asmussen. Councillor Asmussen. Well, thank you very much. I'm quite pleased to see that the name Millard has been kept. I think it's a good compromise between the concerns and the respecting the history and the pioneers that were in the northeast Coquitlam. So the, I'm going to support the Millard Orchard Park as the name for the park in the northeast. Thank you very much. Thank you. I do want to acknowledge the residents association that actually put forward uh, their wish that it be Millard, but there are, uh, uh, I guess, suggestion of a compromise that was available to us, and this, this one works out well. So the motion is on the floor. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item 3.4 concerns 2011 festivals and special events. The recommendations that Council endorse the 2011 priorities for festival and events as set out in the report. Moved by Councillor Nicholson, second by Councillor Reamer. Councillor McDonnell. Uh, thank you. Um, one of the things I'd like to point out in this uh, report is <clears throat> on the second page, uh, the total attendees uh, from 2009 to 2010, from 80,000 up to 122,500 people attending and uh, enjoying events in Coquitlam. And this is uh, due in large part to the time that our staff uh, put in and all the countless thousands of hours of, of uh, volunteer time. So I would just, uh, I, I would like to not let this go by without uh, pointing out that these volunteers are putting in a lot of time for us and uh, which result in uh, 122 and a half thousand people attending our, our uh, special functions. And I think that's very important to note. Outstanding. Thank you. No other speakers. The motions is before us. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Item 4 is the Minister of the Land Use and Economic Development Standing Committee meeting of Monday, February 14th. Recommendations to receive those minutes. Moved by Councillor Reamer, second by Councillor Robinson. All in favour? Opposed? Carried. Councillor Asmussen. Uh, thank you very much. I'm going to be excusing myself as a potential perceived conflict as this property is in close vicinity of my home. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Asmussen. That relates to the next item, number 4.2. Mr. Clerk. Item 4.2 is a development variance permit, and it, it's to vary the minimum required lot width and setbacks to facilitate a 34 lot subdivision with 21 carriage houses at 3434, 3438, and 3444 Roxton Avenue. Recommendations that Council approve the signing and sealing of this DVP and that the Mayor and City Clerk be authorized to execute it. Um, as a DVP, uh, we require speak, call for speakers, please. Yes, we run a mini public hearing related to development variance permits, so I have put before you, are there any speakers for this item? Anyone who'd like to make their thoughts known to Council on this item? The third and last time, are there any speakers to this item? I'll adjourn that. Mr. Clerk. Thank you. Uh, the motion is uh, before Council for a mover and seconder. Second. Moved by Councillor Reamer, second by Councillor McDonnell. Any discussion? Councillor Reid. Um, I just want to point out that I believe these lots, although they vary in different widths to make the new, um, the new plan so that we have some on the end and some on the top and some on the bottom, although we varied the widths, the lots are actually quite large. They're about 4,000 square feet, which in old Coquitlam, that's an RS4 lot, which is New Horizons, Nestor Street. So. They're not really um, as small as people think. They're going to be a little narrower, but they still have to be able to contain three cars, and um, they are really deep in width. So they're going to be—it's going to be a nice product. I hope. I'm anxious to see it. So I just wanted to point that out because we had some letters about people thinking the lots were very small. Actually, their New Horizons is a lovely area, and uh, they do quite well there with 4,000 square foot lots. Thank you. Thank you. No other speakers? Motion before us. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. 
Uh, Your Worship, I will just uh, go retrieve Councillor Asmundson. Item 4.3 is a second develop development variant permit. This is, pertains a lot to width and detached garage setback reduction for proposed 67 lot subdivision at 1404 and 1408 Coast Meridian Road. The recommendations that Council approve the signing and sealing of this DVP and that the Mayor and City Clerk be authorized to execute it. Move. Moved by Councillor Asmussen, second by Councillor Reamer. Speakers, all in favor? Oops, Oops I, my apologies, that's completely wrong. I'm moving along too fast. I'm going to do this. The, we do the mining public hearing again. This is a development variance permit. Are there any speakers to this item? Second time, are there any speakers to this item? Third and final time. Any speakers? Not seeing none. I declare this item closed. Thank you. Um, now we can do the motions, please. Moved by Councillor Asmussen, seconded by Councillor Reamer. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Thank you for catching. Item 4.4 is also for the issuance of a development variance permit, and this pertains to 6 Burbage Street, Maccabee Park. The recommendations that Council approve the signing and seating of this development permit, and the Mayor and City Clerk be authorized to execute it. So moved. Second. Moved by Councillor Sikora, second by Councillor Asmundson. We're going to have a public hearing again. All, uh, are there any speakers to this item? Second time, are there any speakers to this item? Third and final time, are there any speakers to this item? Seeing none, the motion is moved by Councillor Sikora, second by Councillor Asmundson. No speakers, all in favor? Opposed? That carries unanimously. Item 4.5 is our last development variant permit for this evening. It's to vary the rear yard building setbacks to facilitate subdivision into two lots at 456 Walker Street. Uh, the recommendation is to approve the signing and sealing of the DVP and that the Mayor and City Clerk be authorized to execute it. If we can return to the correct order of doing things, are there any speakers to this item? Second, and are there any spe speakers to this item? Third and final time, any speakers? Seeing none, I declare this item closed. Mr. Clerk. Oops. Is there a move? It's moved by Councillor Reamer, second by Councillor Robinson. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Item 4.6 pertains to a development permit, and this is an authorization for a multi unit service commercial edition at 1090 Lloyd Highway. It's the former Barnes Wheaton site. Recognitions that Council approve the signing and sealing of the development permit, and that the Mayor and State Clerk be authorized to execute it. So moved. Second. moved by Councillor Sikora, second by Councillor Reamer. Councillor Reed, the Chair of the Committee. Thank you. Um, I believe Councillor Robinson, myself, and I believe Councillor Reamer, we all spoke at the um, committee level about the wow factor. That's what we call it for short. And uh, we just want to know if you've spoken to the developer on this and if we're going to get some wow in our development. Mr. McIntyre, tell us about wow. <laughs> uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, yeah, uh, wow in green, I guess. Um, we uh, took back the committee's comments. Uh, I, I didn't deal uh, personally with the applicant, the final manager did, but they were successful in the applicant um, uh, dressing up the landscaping of the site, adding some additional landscaping, plus a green wall along the one side. We inquired about uh, additional um, rainwater uh, measures, but we were advised that because of the high groundwater in that area, uh, there's not too much more they can add on that. that uh, that point. So, in terms of greening up the site, the staff were, were pleased with the additions, and uh, thanks. Uh, thank the committee for the direction on that. And we're sure it's a real green wall, not just one painted green. Uh, not painted green, uh, but <laughs> climbing green uh, uh, creepers, I guess. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you for clarifying, clarifying that. <laughs> okay, the motion's on the floor. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. 
Item 4.7 uh, is a proposed rezoning from RS1 to C1 to accommodate a future local commercial development at 1649 Como Lake Avenue. This is bylaw number 4155. Recommendations that Council give first reading to, to Coquitlam Zoning Amendment bylaw number 4155 and that bylaw 4155 and its application be referred to public hearing. Moved by Councillor Sikora, second by Councillor McDonnell. Councillor Robinson. Thank you. Um, this is one that I, I, I struggle with and, and generally I, I like to hear from the public and I suspect that this will, um, will pass first reading and go to public hearing. But I'm not going to support it mostly because I'm just not happy with the traffic flow. I have some real concerns. We don't know, uh, we have no idea of what kind of um, commercial enterprise will be here. This, for all we know, this could be a little corner store that will have very high uh, activity and I'm not comfortable right now with uh, what staff have proposed for uh, traffic management, so I'm just not going to be supporting this going forward until I have the, the traffic management stuff resolved. Thank you. Councillor Nicholson. Thank you, Your Worship. At committee, I had some reservations about the, the graphic presented, the, the drawing. It looks to me like we have the same one in front of us, or has it been redone? Mr. McIntyre. Uh, yes, thank you, Worship. Uh, um, no, I think what's, what's in the package here was the report and attachments that went to Standing Committee last week. Um, again, the Standing Committee's uh, uh, comments and concerns on this were related to the applicant. They've done a preliminary massing um, piece that we were working with them along with the request that they have that material uh, fully uh, fleshed out f in time for the public hearing if council supports it going forward. So we'll, we'll have s some uh, new enhanced graphics by the public hearing if uh, it proceeds to that point. Okay, I'm, I'm prepared to support it going forward to public hearing, but I'm going to be looking for some really good answers about both traffic and the massing, the, the form and character of what's proposed to be developed on the site. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Reed. Thank you. Um, I agree with Councillor Nicholson and Councillor Robinson. This is a funny little site that we've all bought pansies there for the last 20 years, I'm sure. But it is a very peculiar little site in that there would be no access to it or it would be across two lanes of uh, Como Lake, which I think is rather dangerous. It's close to a, an elementary school. There's all kinds of things going on with this site. The um, large building plan that they put forward, you know, I sort of said we like, we like some idea of what you're putting on the site, but this didn't do us any favors. It's just too large for that little site. So I hope when they do come forward to public hearing, Your Worship, that they come forward with something that's going to fit in and be sensitive infill in that neighborhood. So I will support it going to public hearing, but from there on, I don't know. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm of a similar mind to Councillors Nicholson and Reed uh, that I, there are still some questions in my mind, but I will support it to go to a public hearing and we'll get the answers to those and we'll get some of uh, the public's perspectives as well. If that's where we go. Uh, no other speakers. The motion is first reading. All in favor? Opposed? Councillor Robinson is opposed. The motion carries. We're going to public hearing. Item 4.8 uh, pertains to the Austin Heights Neighborhood Plan. This is proposed amendments to the citywide official community plan, bylaw 4196. Recommendations that Council give first reading to OCP amendment bylaw number 4196 that in accordance with the Local Government Act, consider bylaw 4196 in conjunction with the city's five year financial plan and the regional solid waste management plan. Um, having given considerations to Section 879 and having previously requested staff to consult with affected agencies, direct staff to send copies of this bylaw to the following agencies, Board of Metro Vancouver, TransLink, School District 43, the Ministry of Environment and Fisheries and Oceans Canada. And finally, refer this bylaw, bylaw 4196 and its related application to public hearing. Moved by Councillor Robinson, second by Councillor Reamer. Councillor Sikora. Yeah, thank you very much, Mayor. The, I think that this one I'll support it going to public hearing, but I'm sure that there'll be a lot of activity at the public hearing on this one. There's been uh, quite a bit of objections on different things that are going to be put on, on, uh, on this uh, Austin Heights neighborhood plan. Uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, just don't like what they see or what this could be a possibility. So I'm sure there will be a lot of activity at the public hearing. I'll support it going to public hearing, but I'll tell you, 
I think we're going to have council chambers full of people objecting to certain parts of this uh, plan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Reid, the chair of the committee. Thank you. Um, this is a culmination of at least two years' work that I know of. Um, it's been a long process. It's been uh, expanded, and then it's been um, put down to certain neighbourhoods. I mean, we, we've this has been quite the piece of work and I have to commend our planning staff for what they've ended up with. I note that in this um, there are comments that came from all the open houses and I wonder if maybe when we get to the public hearing stuff if that can be included in our package because I think those comments are useful for us as information to be able to have in front of us. So uh, thank you and I certainly will be wholeheartedly supporting this. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Robinson. Um, I'd like to uh, echo Councillor Reid. I didn't know she was going to speak uh, to the work that staff put into this. But also what, what struck me about this process has been the, the number of people that have come out and talked about and really put energy and good thought into this uh, from all ends. So yes, there were some people, like Councillor Sequoia commented, that were unhappy with it. But I think we did a pretty good job of listening to their concerns, addressing them, tweaking it, changing it. Uh, will we ever have a perfect plan? I don't think so. But I think this has been a pretty good process with lots of input from residents. And I'm really thrilled to see it come forward. And I'm th really happy to move it forward to public hearing. And I will echo those comments again. I, I think that there are two or three projects every year that uh, planning staff get deeply involved in and spend hundreds of hours working on. And this is certainly one of them. Housing Choices was another where uh, we do have to take our hat off to the staff. But we also have to acknowledge all those people who came out to talk. And they came out to make suggestions. Those suggestions, by and large, have been incorporated in this. I suspect that once you release a plan like this, you hear from those who object to it more than you hear from those who supported it or who were part of its production. And so we'll, we'll look to the public hearing to hear again from the folks that uh, inside in this community who have grown up here or otherwise and who have an opinion about how Austin Heights ought to, ought to evolve. But I certainly have seen a great amount of work and uh, attending those events where people were, were drawing on paper and were actually showing what they thought would be kind of neat to see in their, in their Austin Heights. I look forward to hearing from the public on that, and I do thank uh, and please pa pass on, Mr. McIntyre, thanks of all of Council to the staff that were involved in this uh, enormous body of work. No other speakers? That's A through D of 4.8. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. We're going to public hearing. Item 4.9 concerns the Coquitlam Tourism Blueprint. The recommendations that the Manager of Economic Development work with parties that came together to produce the Tourism Blueprint in order to advance the six steps outlined in the report, and that the Manager of Economic Development provide periodic updates to Council, including a progress report in approximately six months' time. Well, that's moved by Councillor Reamer, second by Councillor Asmundson. The six months is a revision from the committee. It was a year, and we've shorten that time frame. Councillor Robinson. Yeah, I, I just have a, a question actually. Uh, it has to do with the six steps. I notice that um, the sixth step is to create a master <laughs> list of tourism products in Coquitlam. And I, um, and I want to make sure that we're not being too parochial in our thinking about this, that there are neighboring communities that also have tourism activities or products that we may want to capitalize on or have some synergies with. And I just wanted to hear if that's going to be part of this step or is that a next step or... Uh, so, for example, I was thinking of the Quaquitlam Band um, has their um, cycling tours that they do right across the street from Coquitlam, literally. Um, and I understand that they're going to be doing um, teaching, uh, carving, and smokehouse. They have a whole plan. And there might be some synergies with our heritage stuff that we might be able to work together on. And I just want to get a sense if that's part of this step or if that's a different step. Uh, uh, through the chair, uh, the, the manager of economic development and I have talked about that very issue. And uh, we'll take a little bit of a broader uh, perspective. Uh, if we can draw people into the Tri-Cities area, then... Uh, they will potentially do business in Coquitlam. So we're looking at it from that perspective. Great, thank you. And I think the bike rental is actually in Coquitlam. I never really checked specifically. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Reed. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Well, this was well received and we got to chat a little bit about it at our retreat, um, tourism in general. 
And um, I guess Councillor Macton Mill has had his way with us by saying that sports are uh, sports are it. That's where we're going. Uh, Coquitlam is um, a healthy, active community, and some sports tourism is probably the way that we should be moving. And I guess we'll hear more from our manager of economic development in the next six months. But I will. Um, there's a couple of things that are happening now. Um, I know Councillor McDonnell is working on a lot of tournaments to try and come to our to our city, which would be wonderful. Maybe some summer games in the next five or six years, which would be wonderful. Uh, Vancouver Golf Club has the Canadian 2012 Canadian Women's Open Golf Tournament, which would be good. So we expect Westwood Plateau to have a golf tournament soon, something that's absolutely fabulous and will bring everyone from all over the world in as well. Um, we have lots of options open to us and uh, I hope this is going to be a six months full of uh, energy and vigor in, in pursuing this tourism. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Sikora. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. The, you're right. The fact is that, you know, we have, we have sports in our city that's quite big. A lot of tournaments coming in, and we should encourage a lot more tournaments to come in because all the sports kids that come out from other countries and other provinces, they make friends, friends with our uh, kids in our uh, community, and, and that's what it's all about. But also, I'll tell you, it's... it's they have to stay in hotels, mainly. They eat in there. They go to shopping centers and a few other things. And it's a spin-off, a spin-off that's horrendous, you know, good for the community. So I think it's a good idea to go chasing for sports uh, tournaments. I think it's the best thing that we can do. Because outside of that, uh, Mayor, we don't have anything else we can bring tourists to in Coquitlam. Council Chambers. Pardon? Council Chambers, yeah, for sure. <laughs> If you want to see a zoo. <laughs> That's not a very nice thing to say yeah, to no, the wonderful just, people who are here tonight. I just, I just made a comment. Sorry. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much, Councillor Zagora. Councillor Reamer. Thank you. Um, I just uh, wanted to mention uh, I participated in the one-day workshop that uh, led to this uh, blueprint and I'm really happy to say that there were people there from all over our community, from the arts and culture community, from our business community, uh, and we were really all on the same page and we were all very interested uh, in the same outcome. So I'm very pleased to support this and uh, I think it'll be uh, great moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Rimmer, and I too uh, am excited about this. I think we, we often ignore the value of tourism. Certainly sports tourism is one of those areas. We just saw, heard, saw a bunch of children who found themselves in Kelowna in the dead of winter, which is a place that didn't, hasn't traditionally attracted a lot of uh, uh, tourists and now has uh, tourism facilities. And Kamloops, similarly, Coquitlam, I think, can attract some tourists, on the, on the, certainly on the sports tourism side. But we have a great many other products like our, our wilderness spaces to the north of us, um, uh, like the Aboriginal uh, company that they've set up to give bike tours along the Coquitlam River. I think these kinds of products are worth showcasing and, and I'm pleased to see a, a blueprint that moves us forward towards showcasing them a little bit better. So all in favor? All opposed? That motion carries unanimously. The last item of business arising out of that committee's meeting concerns the Foshan Chan Cheng MOU and the potential visit to Coquitlam. The recommendations that Council endorse the attached memorandum and host the Foshan Chan Cheng delegation when they visit Coquitlam next month. Second. Moved by Councillor Robinson, seconded by Councillor Nicholson. All in favour? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Shishi. Item 5 is the Minister of the Engineer and Utilities and Environment Standing Committee meeting of Monday, February 14th. Recommendations to receive those minutes. Moved move by Councillor Lynch, second by Councillor Nicholson. All in favour? Opposed? Carried unanimously. First item of business it concerns the Coquitlam Diking District and the recommendation. It's a four part recommendation. The first is to request the province to not repeal the Drainage Ditch and Dike Act due to the valuable and cost effective service that diking districts are able to provide. Request the province to undertake a full cost and operating assessment of Diking District assets in order to determine the most appropriate and cost-effective delivery of flood protection to property owners. 
If, in accordance with recommendation two, local government provided flood protection is deemed to be in the best interest of property owners, invite the province to engage in consultation and negotiation for the orderly transfer of the assets and funding to local government, and four, direct staff to send copies of this report to the provincial minister responsible and to other local governments that are affected by the legislation. Moved by Councillor Rasmussen, second by Councillor McDonnell. All in favour? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Item 5.4 concerns the strategic transportation plan update. This is a phase two transportation possibilities and the recommendations that council direct staff to develop uh, the strategic transportation plan investment options that would accommodate approximately 30% of all trips being made by walking, cycling and transit by 2031. So moved. Second. Moved by Councillor Reamer, second by Councillor Robinson. I look to the chair of the committee, Councillor Asmussen. Thank you very much. Um, staff has been doing a lot of good work on this. They're going through our strategic plan transportation possibilities. I guess what I mentioned at committee and I'll mention here at council is the success of our transportation plan, other modes of getting people out is also very dependent on other agencies such as TransLink. And what we're going to be having in Coquitlam in starting in the middle of April throw is cuts to our transit service. We'll be having cuts in the night service going from half hour to hour the service service. We'll have a reduction on Saturday service on the 169 from 15 minutes to half hour. And the also will be a later starting of the buses on weekends also. So when we are moving ahead, trying to get people out of vehicles into other modes of transportation, other agencies are key to us in succeeding in this. And things like this happening and are going to happen are not going to be a help to us getting people into other modes to get around rather than single occupancy vehicle. Thank you. And I agree wholeheartedly. Councillor Robinson. Thank you. I, I actually want to I want to echo uh, Councillor Asmundson's comments in a uh, presentation that w was given to us in committee. They noted that um, if we want to get 30 percent of of the mode share uh, um, uh, using transportation other than the vehicle motor vehicle, um, we're able to make some major changes. And Vancouver already has over 40 percent either walking, cycling, or transit. New West has about 35 percent, and Burnaby about 28 percent and everyone else is much less. And if you take a look about what those three communities have that the rest of us don't, it's SkyTrain. And um, I think that's really critical that unless we have that actually <coughs> happening here, I, we're not gonna hit our targets. Having said that, I am told um, and constantly reassured that it is coming. Um, but I also think that it needs to make, to have the right support from the rest of, um, from the city. And so I'm looking forward to seeing this plan, the strategic transportation plan, reflected in next year's budget, that we should be seeing more support for cycling infrastructure and for pedestrian infrastructure in order to make this um, come to fruition. So I'm thrilled to see it, and I'm glad uh, that we're moving forward. Thank you. Absolutely. And, uh, and speaking to Councillor Asmundson's comments about uh, the bus system, we, um, we see the same kinds of issues you know, south of the Fraser, for example, areas where they do have SkyTrain and their mode share is still incredibly low for transit, partly because they don't have the system, the network of connecting buses. In the end, if we, if we don't get people into the habit at a young age and, and with some reliability and responsibility of the bus system, then we're not going to be able to increase the mode share in transit. We're going to end up with the Evergreen Line and, and people will not be using it to its full capacity because we don't have the buses. And so this frustrates me incredibly. I sit as the, on the Mayor's Council for Regional Transportation and unfortunately because of funding issues, uh, TransLink has had to rationalize its service. It doesn't rationalize its service in Vancouver because Vancouver's buses, bus routes generally pay for themselves because they have enough users because they have enough frequency and reliability that people get used to using the buses. And in the suburbs, we can't get people used to using the buses because quite often the bus will be full and they won't be able to get on it or else it will go down to one hour uh, frequency or half hour frequency on the supposedly frequent uh, frequency routes. It, uh, it's a double-edged sword. We need to find enough money to be able to put the buses on the roads. We also need to get that transportation, uh, the reliable rail transportation put in place. And if we don't get both of them, that we, don't, we won't be able to improve the ride share, the, the mode share for transit. Similarly, we need the, those increased investments in, in uh, cycle and pedestrian uh, infrastructure as well. So, motion before us, all in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. 
Item 5.5.2 concerns the 2011 Universal Accessibility Advisory Committee Work Plan. Um, I won't read out all the details, but the recommendations that Council approve the 2011 Universal Accessibility Advisory Work Plan as follows. Sorry, I didn't see who moved. Moved by Councillor Robinson, seconded by Councillor Asmussen. Councillor Robinson. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to update Council. Uh, the committee has met in between the committee, uh, the standing committee meeting and this Council meeting, and the Universal Accessibility Advisory Committee has uh, made a motion to um, take a hiatus on the uh, accessibility awards this year, given that it's not clear where the an award recognition piece would fit in if there was an overall strategy. So they've um, opted to take a hiatus for this year on that piece of the work plan with the idea to bring it back for next year. Thank you. So that would be the removal of bullet four in front of you. So we're proposing a motion. Is that a motion to amend or? You have to amend it? Um, it was noted as to be confirmed and I think what this is saying is it do not expect future confirmation. She's confirmed. I'm confirming. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. The rest of the motion before us. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. And before we move to the reports of staff, I'll simply report to Council uh, the Mayor's prerogative related to standing committees after discussion with, uh, with Council over the last few weeks, uh, over the last few months actually and particularly seeing the, the number of council members that are uh, interested in attending all of the, uh, the committee meetings, the standing committee meetings, it seems much more productive to be able to put all of them as voting members on those committees rather than have some people that are attending committees regularly not being able to vote because they're not on the committee. So the mayor has hereby appointed all council members to all of the committees and we're, we leave the chairs in place. So it'll be somewhat of a hybrid between the uh, former system of committee of the whole and the standing committee system that we've just left. Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. Item six is reported the General Manager of Engineering and Public Works, and it pertains to energy efficient street lighting. I uh, recommend that Council endorse the use of adaptive street lighting technology on the city's inventory of Davit style street lights as presented in the report before you. Councillor Sikora. Councillor Sikora, did you have something? Yes. Yes, on this one here. Oh, oh okay. Sorry. Got moved by Councillor Reamer first. Second. Second by Councillor Lynch. Um, Councillor Sikor has yeah, thank button. you, Mayor. Uh, I did get to receive some calls on, on, the, on this lighting system. Now, the one thing that I got a call, I thought that we were putting in the LED uh, LED lights, and of course they're very, very bright, and they'd be dimmed. But if we're going to be doing a dimming process on our lights that we have uh, as installed now. People have concerns. How much is the dimming going to be? Is it going to be a problem? And I don't know the RCMP have a report saying that they didn't make any comments on it. But because I guess it's too early for them to make any comments on it. But I, but I think that, you know, we need to make sure that the lights are not dimmed so much at night to where it's a problem to people that have a low vision problem or a few other things that are happening, especially pedestrians, you know. I'd hate to see some pedestrians being hit because our lights are being dimmed and the motors don't see them, you know. So those are things that are really concerning me. Of how much are we going to dim them? You know, it's nice to read the report, sounds good and everything else, but in reality, uh, are we going to have a problem? Thank you. Councillor Nicholson. Thank you, Your Worship. I would propose to amend this. In the, the recommendation that's before us to include the pilot LED lighting project that was proposed in the original report. And I'd like to, if I find a second, or speak to that. Thank you, Councillor Asmussen. I have a second amendment, which I, I would like to restore item three from the original report as well. Would you like me to deal with that no. separately? Well, we've, we've moved it separately, so um, why, don't, why don't you itemize it and see if it's the same seconder. Um, Direct staff to consult with the development community on changing the city's straight street lighting standards to LED luminaires. Okay, so we'll take that as one amendment. One amendment? The LED provisions that were in the original staff report and the consultation with the development industry uh, we're on the amendment. Councillor Nicholson. And speaking on the amendment, the LED lighting project that was in the original report was a little bit difficult to pull out of the report as a single item, but it's a small project, 30 lights. 
as I see it, enough to give our staff a test bed, somewhere so that as we move forward and consider LED lights as replacements or LED lighting in new development areas, staff have a good understanding of the choices that can be made, of the costs that will be incurred and the operating costs that might be saved and put us in a position at a relatively low cost today to make an informed decision tomorrow. So that's the basis on which I'd like to see us restore the small LED project that was envisaged in the first report. As to consulting with the de development community on changing the city's streetlight standards to LED luminaires, we're not talking about spending any money. We're just talking about talking to the development community about what our standards might be in the future. That seems to me to be the entirely appropriate way for us to proceed in terms of greenfield development. And that's why I've made proposed both these amendments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's moved by Councillor Nicholson and seconded by Councillor Asmundson that we undertake those amendments. Councillor Sikora, on the yeah, amendment. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor. The, those LED lights, they're very, very expensive. They're, they're like uh, $1,500 US a piece. <clears throat> now, to me, I'm saying, uh, are we going to go citywide? Are we going to go just for 30? And what does that really prove? Not much. The fact is that, you know what, it's costly. I know that there's some savings as far as power is concerned. I don't know how much uh, saving would be. Is it $200,000 a year, $300,000 a year, half a million dollars a year? I don't have anything in front of me to be able to support this. Uh, you know, that uh, will be a great saving. So uh, those are things that really, really bother me. But I also heard that uh, uh, one proponent saying $1,500, another one in China saying that it's uh, around $800 uh, per light. So I don't know who to believe. But I think that as time goes on, I think you might even be able to find uh, a company, a huge company, not a small peanut company, but a huge company that'd be willing to put those lights in at no expense to the city except get the money on a yearly basis that we get savings for, for the power. So in other words, if there's half a million dollars a year in, in savings to the city, you give that company half a million dollars a year, and that's how you pay for the lights. No, no, uh, certainly a burden on the taxpayers and a few other things. Right now, we're still going through rough times. Some financial problems here in the city and to the taxpayers. And I, I think we need to be very, very careful how we spend the taxpayers' money. And uh, that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Asmundson. Well, sure. thank you, and I, I thank uh, Councillor Nicholson for bringing forward the, this motion. I think it's important that we talk with the development industry about bringing in LED lighting. I think in new development areas, it is a far more cost-effective way to do it. In our report, it talked about the retrofitting, which is a big cost. But I think also development industry looking to new areas and wanting to have areas as green as possible and energy consumption would be a good marketing advantage for companies to look at. And I think with city staff and the development industry to consult and work this out, I think that we can get these LED lights started in new areas and have a real benefit to the city. Because remember, if they do install them, and I would encourage them, as long as the, that we, as a city in ongoing times, save money by reduced electricity costs. And that's a very good thing for the environment and for our city budgets. And it's, once again, it's talking about it. It's not mandating it. A report will still have to come back to Council on the pros and cons, or if a developer with standards set up by our staff and the developers will move ahead themselves and take that advantage and that leap into this area. As for the other parts of it, the dimming part, I think that's a good way to go. We had a test area. We did a test study with residents. We got their feedbacks on it, and the results were very good. So I I'm, I'm, have no problems moving forward on the other part of this with the dimming technology because we did go out to the communities, we did consult, we did a test case, and we got the good results back on it. Thank you. Thank you. Similarly, I, uh, I, I agree that we need to be careful with the, the residents' money, and that's why I'm supporting this particular, both of these um, uh, amendments. The amendments would have us uh, uh, continue to do some testing related to LEDs. I think they will continue in efficiency and con continue 
in reducing the cost of them, but we're not going full, full bore on replacing our existing uh, stock of streetlights across the city with LEDs uh, because that is still deemed to be too expensive. But I think it's, it's worth continuing to test there. And in the development areas, I think the development industry, when we find a new technology that will improve uh, the environment or improve the uh, durability of, uh, of development uh, installations, we typically adopt it in consultation with the development industry. And LED lights in new development are very cost effective because we're not replacing an existing lamp that typically costs $750 to install and then throwing that one out and putting in a, a, a more expensive lamp in the development industry it would be covered by the cost of development and the developer would end up having to, to put that but in fact the city then ends up benefiting because we're not covering the cost for the next hundred years of an inefficient technology uh, which I think is I think it's the right thing to do in the development areas so I'm going to support the amendment in both of its parts uh, on the dimming side, it, this provides us a 4.7 year payback uh, for this particular um, section. And I think that's an incredibly short payback for the investment we're putting in, and it makes a lot of sense for us to do it. Councillor Reamer. Thank you. I just want a clarification on Councillor Nicholson's first amendment. Um, can you please read that to me again? Sure. Uh, Councillor Nicholson has proposed uh, to include the uh, LED pilot project, um, so to bring that back as part of the recommendation. Okay, so clarification on that then, Councillor Nicholson. Um, that was also included in the old recommendation number one, but there was also a section recommendation two where we were designating the annual energy cost savings for conversion to LED. Sorry, you're not and, and your recommendation includes both. I'll turn to Councillor, we'll activate Councillor Nicholson's microphone. And there you go. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Reamer. No, that doesn't include recommendation two. Okay. It's, uh, and maybe I'll just leave it there. If somebody okay. wants to try and amend to pick up recommendation two, I'll speak to why I didn't. No. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you for that clarification. Very good. Okay. And Councillor Lynch. I just wanted to add uh, what was be some background information from the committee. When these recommendations came forward, we were looking at it, and one of the reasons that we were, wasn't that we were against going with the LED lights, we were just looking at what the report was saying. It says that there, there's an expectation to see the price dropping in the market as the market matures, so um, if we were to wait a little while, we were thinking we'd get a better deal. There was also the future funding that may come from other external sources, such as the Pacific Carbon Trust Fund. And the last one, we've already discussed this around the table tonight, but the idea was that rather than doing the retrofitting, we would be looking at the new development areas and then they would be being put in by the developers. So that was totally different. It, wasn't, it was a different way of going around it with, without the cost of the city. So that's why at the time the, uh, the committee, and the committee struggled with this, that's why the recommendation came forward with just the first one initially because it, we felt that with uh, a slight delay, we could probably have uh, found a developer who was going to put in somewhere so we wouldn't have to retrofit. It would be the, the initial um, setup as it should be and also that would give our staff the time to source uh, future funding that may be available and also maybe take the benefit of the prices dropping. That was the rationale behind um, going forward with just the first recommendation. Yeah, well, there was solid support for the first recommendation, and we were you know, the committee obviously showed itself to be torn on second, second and third. And yeah. um, but we'll see what happens today. Seeing no other speakers, the motion is to amend by adding the LED pilot and the uh, discussion with development community. All in favor of the amendments? All opposed? Councillor Sikora and Councillor Lynch are opposed. The motion carries. The motion as amended. Any discussion on the recommendations as amended? Seeing none, as amended. All in favor? Opposed? Councillor Sikora is opposed. The motion carries. Item 7 pertains to the Sustainability and Environmental Advisory Committee. Their proposal to establish, approve the implementation of the Sustainability and Environment Com Advisory Committee for the Sea of Coquitlam reporting through the Engineering Utilities and Environmental Standing Committee. Two, the Council adopt the terms of reference included as attachment one to the report, adopt the work plan framework, which was attachment two to the report, direct staff to advertise and receive applications for membership on the new committee for future review and selection by Council, and five, that Councillor Reamer be appointed as chair and Councillor Lynch as vice chair for the committee. 
Moved by Councillor Asmussen, second by Councillor Nicholson. Councillor McDonnell. Thank you. I'm supportive of this. Uh, my, my question is to Mr. Gilbert. Uh, what's the time frame for uh, recommendation number four uh, on the advertising and the applications? Uh, the time frame is, is tight in, in the sense of it is typical that um, council does not allow committees allow, but uh, committees don't generally go over a term of council and we obviously have an election in November. Uh, we can um, proceed with the advertising um, uh, as soon as possible and go through the selection process. It just may not be that there be a large number of meetings before the normal time that a committee um, um, stops its work prior to an election. Um, so I'd say from a clerk's office perspective, we can advertise uh, probably a couple weeks just to pull the ad together and make sure we meet the deadlines for the relative, uh, the newspaper requires a few days of advance notice, that sort of thing. Okay. So an application, so when do you, when do you foresee this, um, if, if we all vote for sure. this, when do you see this um, completed? If I was to do the math going out, I'd say about, let's say two weeks to get the ad in place, uh, two to three weeks to allow the community to see. We will generally run more than one ad. Um, and then we will meet uh, to um, triage the applications, consult with the chair and, and vice chair. Um, so sometime around, let's say, two months from now, just to, to ballpark uh, a date. Thank you. Thank you. And others? All in favor? All opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Item 8 is a notice of motion which was introduced uh, last week. This concerns the redesignation, or last council meeting, this concerns the redesignation of the Westwood Plateau Golf Course lands. Uh, the staff recommendations that council give consideration to the following notice of motion which was presented by Councillor Secor and seconded by Councillor Lynch. And that is that Metro Vancouver be requested to redesignate the Westwood Plateau Golf Course lands which are presently designated in the draft RGS as general urban and in the city of Coquitlam OCP as extensive recreation to the RGS's Conservation and Recreation Land Use designation. Um, as per procedure, Councillor Secor, as the mover of the motion, um, has the privilege of speaking first. And he has activated his lamp first. Councillor Secor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I wouldn't speak uh, to this uh, bylaw or this uh, notice of motion right now because I believe that either Council uh, Lynch or Council uh, Linda Reimer has an uh, amendment to it to accomplish what we wanted to accomplish in the first place. So I'll wait for the amendment first. Sorry. So you're saying there's there's an amendment speak first. Pardon? Okay. I'm sorry, I, you activated your, your microphone as they Okay, to there's an amendment coming forward. Okay. Councillor Robinson. Thank you. So um, I, I wasn't here at last uh, council meeting and uh, saw this notice of motion come forward and uh, the two weeks since have been a flurry of activity with um, making sure that, you know, we're really paying close attention to this regional growth strategy with which uh, this seems like a really small request to look at in terms of changing um, land use for um, a golf course. And my experience has been that I've, some, I've gotten quite overwhelmed with the volume of, of information and certainly conversations from I think most of those people sitting over there. And, um, and I also know that we've got a public meeting coming up March 9th. I believe, to talk about RGS. And I would actually prefer, if we could, if this council was willing, to defer this whole discussion until we had um, all of the many ducks, um, because I think there's a much bigger issue that is influencing the thinking, that it's not just about this golf course, it's, it's, there's a whole planning issue that we've, we have a challenge with, which is why it's so hard, that the, the layers and layers and layers of this are so overwhelming and um, and every time I turn around and talk to somebody else well we just heard that North Van is as asking for this exception and so somebody else is asking for that exception and it keeps changing on us we keep grasping at it and it keeps changing on us so I, I think it's really important when we, we come down to how it's going to play out in our community that we understand exactly what that looks like and um, I'm not really comfortable doing that tonight especially if we're gonna have a public meeting March 9th I think there's a way for us to be efficient on this, and I'm hoping that we can defer this item. 
Motion to defer by Councillor Robinson, second by Councillor Asmundson on the motion to defer. Um, okay. Councillor Reamer, would you like to speak to the motion to defer? Um, yes, I'm, I'm not going to say whether I support or don't support uh, the motion to defer at this point um, because I'm, I want to listen to what my colleagues have to say about it. Um, I do know that, I do know what the intent of Councillor Sikora's uh, motion is and I do know that uh, way back on uh, March 8th of 2010, I made a motion to uh, rescind a letter that we had sent to Metro Vancouver with respect to uh, redesignating the golf course from conservation, recreation to urban. I made a motion to rescind that so that we could keep these lands in conservation recreation. And um, I, I understand that um, uh, Councillor Sikora's intent here is to get um, those lands designated with a two-thirds vote and as well a public hearing, um, which is why I was going to actually make an amendment to his, his motion, but I'm not sure about our parliamentary procedure here. So. Okay, we're only speaking to the amendment or the, to the motion to, de okay. to defer okay. this. So I'm um, going to listen to what my so colleagues have any, to say. So if you have any information about why this ought not to be deferred uh, or ought to be deferred, that would be the... Well, it's just that the, the people of the Westwood Plateau have spoken loudly and clearly ever since the end of January of 2010. Um, we didn't deal with it then. Um, a motion has come forward tonight to deal with it. I think I have a really good idea what they want and, and so I'd be prepared probably to go ahead um, with this this evening um, knowing what it is that the citizens want and, and I think it's time to put this matter to bed and so I, I, I'm kind of speaking probably for not deferring but I'll listen to what my colleagues have to say. Thank you. Councillor McDonnell. Thank you. I'm going to support this motion of deferral. Um, and I'm, and I'm grateful to the uh, residents up on the plateau because they've caused me really to look into this. And this is a, it's a dog's breakfast once you start going through this whole um, regional growth strategy and there's layers and layers and it's, uh, it's far reaching and there, there's so much more to it than uh, the protection um, of, of the golf course, which is of course, um, I wanna make sure that, you know, the residents get what they want. But in looking at some of the ex um, exemptions that some of the cities have put forward, Councillor Robinson just brought up a, a good one. North Van put forward an exemption to be able to put condo, and now we're talking about recreation and conservation. They put in an exemption to be able to put uh, condos and developments in theirs. And so that sets a precedent. Well, I want to make sure that when we're talking about protecting our lands, that those precedents aren't going to be able to override uh, what our wishes are and we're not there yet we we need to do a lot more digging into this and we need to have a lot more answers and this is a uh, this motion tonight would be a, a um, maybe a, a good way to placate some people but it's not getting to the protection that you want and so I, I support this I want to hear what everybody else has to say but I also want to be able to do a lot more research and by our staff and by us into this to make sure that at the end of the day uh, that Coquitlam is, is heard and, and we get what, we, what, what our residents want. So um, I'm going to support this deferral. Thank you. Councillor Sikora. On yeah, thank you very much, Mayor. The one thing that the West will put those people, all they want is some peace and, and some rest from, from what has happened. The fact is they had a public meeting uh, uh, some months ago, matter of fact, last February, because I just had come out of the hospital, went to that meeting. But the fact is that, you know, they called the public meeting to... Councillor Sikor, it has to be on the motion to defer. Yeah, and, uh, 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 and none of the council members chose to attend except myself, because, uh, you know, I, uh, I could just... Councillor Sikor, okay, that's not so true, the deferral on this one is, Mayor, is very simple. All you're doing is procrastinating by deferring it because you can pass this again and whatever comes back on March the 9th, we can also address it. 
we can also be addressed at, at that time. What's wrong with passing this? What is happening? That my notice of motion was for, we, we only, we passed on my notice of motion without the amendment that Councilor Raymer or uh, Councilor Lynch would be passing an amendment would be that there's 66 percent. And what is happening that the uh, mayor, uh, and uh, I'm going to say this, the fact is that, that the uh, taxpayers in West Plateau, they don't trust some of the council members. In council support. It's so, only on the motion. So deferred. I will not be supporting the deferral. It's time that we put this to bed. We can pass this. And then whatever comes on March 9 comes March 9. I don't know what it is that we're going to be dancing around. All these people in Westwood Plateau want the golf course, uh, uh, you know, for some protection for themselves. So I will not be supporting the deferral. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Nicholson. Thank you, Your Worship. Councillor McDonnell summed it up very nicely for me. He said, we're not there yet. We're not in a position to make the major decisions that we have to make around <clears throat> not just the Westwood Plateau lands, the green zones, what were the green zones, the riparian areas, the city parks, the regional growth strategy, the degree to which our city chooses to submit itself to the rule of Metro Vancouver, what areas should call for a two-thirds vote, what areas should call for a 50% vote. We have time set aside on the 9th of March devoted to nothing but the regional growth strategy and all its implications. Councillor Sikora says it's very simple, we should go ahead with it today. It's not very simple. Councillor Sikora's motion that he put forward two weeks ago, Councillor Reamer apparently stands ready to amend that motion. I stand ready to amend that motion and Lord knows where we'd go or how long we'd be here ending up in a result that might very well either tie our hands on the 9th of March or leave us having to overturn a decision taken today when we're not there yet. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lynch. Well, I was about to say that something similar. I don't think Councillor Scorer was aware of how many uh, amendments that are being circulated around the table here and um, what we're trying to do here uh, to start with had to do with the Western Plateau golf course lands but there's so many other lands, riparian lands and, and everything else and there's developments, new developments every day and it's almost like a moving target and now that since this motion was put forward um, that we've decided to have a public hearing or some type of a facilitation session on the regional growth strategy I think it does make sense for us to, to defer this until after we've had the input from that session and until after we've had a little bit more time to consider what some of the amendments are coming forward. I still, I still think that in the end, and it's still my intention in the end, to protect not just the golf course, but the riparian area lands and some of the other green zones that, that we do need to find the appropriate method. And I believe that is in the regional growth strategy. I don't believe it's under the context statement. And I think we need to, to formalize how we're going to provide that direction to our representatives on Metro so that when they go back to their meetings at, at uh, Metro Vancouver, they can vote and talk um, and perhaps persuade some of the other people who are voting to make the appropriate amendments to the regional growth strategy to provide the type of protection of the green zones that we want in Coquitlam. Sorry, Councillor Reed. Thank you. Well, the um, motion to defer, I, I will support it, but probably for different reasons. I eat and sleep this thing. I am so tired of this thing, I'm going to have a t-shirt made that says I do not want to talk about it anymore. But we have some great people in our community and Helen Brown and I sat on the phone for at least an hour yesterday talking about this very thing and some of the interesting things that have come up. March 9th is just the meeting that we chose to have for the public so they can all come and give us input. And this is a Coquitlam only, come, everybody come and, and talk to us. But before then, land uses plans were to gather all the latest stuff, take it to a meeting of land use, this was before last Monday's motion, and sit down and hash out where we think we might be, and then come forward to the rest of council and go over it. because. This is an unbelievably complicated thing. Mr. McIntyre made a comment to me um, 
today that I think only Councillor Nicholson can appreciate, but this is like the Federal Income Tax Act. Every time they put something down that's a rule, there's nine exceptions to every rule. And that's about where you are. You can stumble through this and, and break your neck at, at every paragraph. It's incredibly complicated. At no time in our deliberations here, and I have them all here and everything that's been said, have we ever uh, not had protection on our golf course. The LRSP still stands. When we went to our um, urban containment area and we moved into where we were going to do a green map, which would include all the green parks, riparian areas, conservation areas, golf courses, everything. It did change it to 50 plus one, I know that, and that's, that's a problem. But we waited, and we waited, and there's 29 pages, and I have each and every one of them, and I've read just about each and every one of them. And I'd like to know how many people have read this whole darn thing, because if you did, I'll tell you, you'd be scratching your head. This agreement is for 30 years, and I'll tell you, as a homeowner, if I brought this to you regarding your lands, you wouldn't sign it. It's, it's very, very difficult document. So where I'm standing right now, there is one motion, and it's 6.3.4b, um, and there's one sentence in there. The reason we want, I want to defer, and Councillor Robinson, Mr. McIntyre, and I, we've spoken about this, it's that one paragraph, if we can remove it, we can probably accomplish everything we want to accomplish. But if we can't move it, then we're back to plan A, and we have to sit here and find out from Metro. I'm hoping that before March 9th, staff at least will know whether we can remove this one paragraph. We're, we're all here working for you. We're not here to work against you. We're trying to do the best darn thing, not just for the Westwood Plateau, but for every other citizen in every other area in our city. The things that this regional growth strategy is bringing on us is relinquishing our powers and your power to vote for people that have to listen to you, and you just want to give all that power to people that don't give a darn about you, actually. But that's a huge, huge, huge decision. So I'm going to support the deferral motion just so that I can find out what Metro Vancouver, if, what they would allow. I want confirmation of the changes in the RGS that allow North Vancouver to um, move other things into the uh, conservation and recreation, which I thought was a sanctuary. Obviously, it's not. And the one thing that comes up is this hurry up and slow down business. What about all the First Nations lands? And excuse me, it's on the motion to defer, and this is one of the reasons I'm going to defer, because you can't, you, you can't get away from any of this. The City of North Vancouver asked that the land use designations not be shown for First Nation lands unless they come under regional authority. Then you go the limitations on the jurisdiction, recognized in certain sections. However, it is important to set out Metro Vancouver's expectations with regard to those lands as context for treaty and other possible negotiations. Where does that lead me? Does that leave our lands like Capilano and Squamish with 15 condominiums on them, 50,000 people and not one contribution to our tax base? I don't think so. And I'm not going to sign something like that. And I figure I know what I'm doing. I figure I'm getting really smart. I'm going to apply for a job in planning one of these days. And um, I'm going to defer it until I have the answer to each and every one of those. And we at Land Use next week, I would like to discuss perhaps even maybe some kind of a workshop forum with Land Use and maybe some of the members of the community so they can go over this step by step and figure out where the heck we are before March 9th. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I'm sure our planning staff are nervous about your announcement of your intention to apply for a job there. Councillor Asmundson. Thank you. I'm going to be supporting the deferral. I think the key point this was made earlier by Councillor Robinson is that we have a public meeting to hear some more information before we make any issues. The golf course is one part of a very big document that's before us. And there, as you said, it's a very complex document. This council has shown in the past um, not wanting to support the RGS, so you could move a motion 
to satisfy and then turn around and not support the RGS, which kind of contradicts. I mean, the issue for me has been, uh, Council Reed touched on, is the transfer of powers. This is transferring a lot of power to Metro Vancouver over the regional governments, and, and that's one of the biggest problems with it. Councillor Sikora has spoken for years about not wanting to give any more power to Metro Vancouver except for what they have under water, sewer, garbage recycling in that area. Metro Vancouver has come up with a plan trying to satisfy all the interests to keep retaining some of that power. Then they can come and grab back, grab back over years, more and more power, more and more direction. And it seems to me that the only way, if we were to go this step by step and walk people through it, there's so many steps to go through here that we may be here for another 10 years because it's so complicated, so hardly written. And I, I give, I've read it myself, I've gone through it. Uh, Councilor Reed has probably done the most extensive researching back and forth on it. And it's, it's a complex document with a lot of exemptions, a lot of stuff. Very hard to get its handle on. So I'm going to support the deferral. We need more information. That March 9th meeting is going to give us better information. We can take that information away and help build towards a better decision when we move forward on the whole RGS, just not one piece of the RGS. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is a particularly good example of why notice of, or how notices of motion are a really poor way of making decisions, I think. Um, we end up with uh, a notice of motion that gets drafted that didn't have a lot of staff input and, and is immediately wrong. And there. Point of order, Mayor. On a point of order, you're, you're not going to tell me that okay. I didn't talk to the okay. staff. I did. Now, okay. if you want to uh, get in an argument with me, go ahead. Councillor Sakura, Councillor like a mayor. Councillor Sakura, I will act like a mayor if you wish. Uh, please, I have the floor. I did talk to the staff. Please, please Councillor Sakura, I have the floor. I didn't interrupt when you were speaking. So what we have is a, a notice of motion that's drafted. It doesn't have the background from staff. It doesn't have, uh, and essentially, it, it, it isn't something that we can actually do. The motion, uh, this is on the advisability of whether or not we should defer it. And I, I gather that I, I guess we ought to defer it because the notice of motion uh, says that we request to redesignate some lands under the draft RGS. I spoke with staff on Friday at Metro Vancouver and they said that we just can't actually do that. Um, so I guess there's a notice of motion because I know that they've spoken with Councilor Sakura as well and there's going to be a, a motion to defer, to, to um, amend that, uh, to make it so that it's workable. And Councilor uh, Lynch actually said there are several motions to amend this so that it's something that we could do. So really what we've got before us is a motion that we can't do um, and we're going to vote on it or not. And I think we, we can't actually vote on it right now. And I, I wish I knew what the, the amendments were. But that, again, points to the challenges associated with notices of motion is because we don't, we're going to actually make a decision in a few minutes. And it might be on words that we haven't heard yet. And we don't know, we don't know what those, that motion to amend is. So we're making a decision on whether to defer without knowing what the motion would read if we didn't defer it. Uh, and that's a challenge by itself. Sure Councillor Sikora. So, Councillor Sikora, no, I've asked you to, to respect the person that has the floor. Thank you. So before us is a notice of motion that we can't do. Um, the motion is to defer it. I'm going to support the motion to defer it uh, to find out whether, in fact, it's something that can be fixed um, based on uh, further discussion. Is it a point of information or point of order? Uh, it's a question regarding deferral to okay, staff. Go, go ahead. A question from Councillor Reamer. Thank you. Um, I, it, it's been very interesting listening to my colleagues, and, and I appreciate the fact that we are having a meeting on March 9th um, for, to obtain public input on the regional growth strategy. Um, by deferring this motion, and my question is to staff now, um, we have a 60-day time frame from the time that this came out, and I believe the release date is January the 14th. We have a 60-day time frame 
which takes us into March. I believe the date uh, that we have to have feedback back to Metro is March 22nd. Uh, so I guess what I'm asking is, uh, by deferring this motion, will we be bringing it back to the floor after the March 9th meeting? And if so, what is the timeline for that? Um, which meeting are we talking about? Which meeting would this come back to? Mr. Clerk. Uh, that is correct at this time, and uh, uh, Mr. McIntyre, correct me if he wishes, but there's a, a meeting scheduled, and the first advertisements for that will happen at the end of this week for March 9th. Um, it's believed that staff will prepare a report for March 14th Land Use Standing Committee, but this notice of motion, if it is deferred, um, will appear on the agenda on March 21st. The motion still stands as it's been a motion put forward, it has um, a right to reappear. So what we will say is the motion to defer is to the March 21st council meeting. I, okay, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I guess my question is, I, I was going to, uh, Councillor Secor's motion by itself doesn't really change anything because of the clause that's on page 60 of the regional growth strategy. Um, so I, I guess what I'm wondering is how we're going to bring it back or would we then have to amend it at that time? Um, I was going to add a clause that Metro uh, be requested to, de to delete yeah. the clause that's on page 60. So yeah. Um, this time, motion to defer has precedent over the motion that is before you, so once it's voted on to be deferred, it's deferred as is, and subsequent amendments would have to take place when the motion comes back. When the, uh, okay, when, okay. All right, thank you. you the, the answer we received wasn't, Councillor Reed, I believe she may have a better, just one moment, please. Sir? One that I was referring to, right. and Mr. McIntyre mm -hmm. is, going to be taking that prior to March 9th to see what the flavor of the month is down at Metro to see if they like it they don't like it because if they like it we can go plan A if they don't like it we'll figure out another way around it thank you um, I'm, you know, I'm going to need a motion Councillor Zakora has indicated he wants to go a second round of debate on this um, so we did Oh, I was trying to clear so well, I, I want to do the same thing. You, you want to do what? The fact is that I did phone Matro today, and Matro said that with the amendment that was proposed by uh, Linda Reimer or Barry Lynch that would have been proposed, that they could accept that. Very, very simple. All you people are doing is shirking your responsibility. You're hiding. You're hiding. Because you can't make a decision, and that's the problem. Well, Councillor Sakura. No, um, staff at Metro made it very clear to me, and I don't know what they told you today, um, but they told me that they had also explained it to you that it wasn't possible to do this, including, uh, including changing that <laughs> motion at the draft stage, that it wasn't possible, that their suggestion was you, you could wait till the GR RGS was adopted, and then you could move a, an amendment or request an amendment after adoption of oh, the RGS. Sorry, That's not what, well, not, not true, Mayor. Okay. This is a, a motion to defer, and this is a perfect example of why the, uh, this is the notice of motion process is not the great way to make public policy. Uh, the motion is to defer. Any further? All in favor? All opposed? Councillor Reamer, Councillor Sikora are opposed. The motion carries. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, item 9 is an item of reconsideration. Uh, this is reconsideration of Resolution 35, um, which uh, pertains to Bylaw 4182, and this is 606 to 618 Langside Avenue and 1714 Bresley Street. Um, the original recommendation uh, proposed, um, uh, moved by Councillor McDonnell and, and seconded by Councillor Robinson, was that Council give second and third readings to see Coquitlam Zoning Amendment Bylaw 4182 2010. Um, just procedurally, that means the item of reconsiderations that the motion comes back as if it had never been voted on. So it stands on the floor as moved and seconded. And I was calling it back. I know that some count staff had made some, or rather council had, had expressed some reservations related to this. And it also, by bringing it back and referring it back to staff, we would allow staff to sit down with the, with the proponent 
and see if we could work out a better solution. The alternative would be to let it um, rest as having been defeated, which meant that the proponent wasn't permitted to do anything for six months on it. We don't think that's particularly, I don't think that's particularly uh, constructive at this point, so I was hoping that we'd be able to entertain a motion to refer it to staff. Moved by Councillor uh, Nick, sorry, moved by Councillor McDonnell, second by Councillor Asmundson to refer to staff. A motion, Councillor Nicholson. I was going to move exactly that motion, Your Worship. I have nothing to say about it. Okay. Anything further from anybody? Seeing none. All in favor of the motion to refer. All opposed. The motion carries. Uh, staff will now work with the proponent. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, we do have one onward transmittal item, uh, item 10. And this concerns appointments to the Joint Family Court and Youth Justice Committee. The recommendation is that Mr. Alexander Ryan and Ms. Shirley Swears be reappointed as City of Coquitlam representatives to the Joint Family Court and Youth Justice Committee for 2011. Moved by Councillor Robinson, second by Councillor Reamer. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, that's the last formal uh, item for the agenda. Councillor Robinson. Thank you very much. Mayor Stewart, uh, I know that you're not a fan of notices of motion, but I have one. I don't, I don't doubt it. It's a cosmetic pesticide ban for Coquitlam, a series of whereas clauses. Therefore, be it resolved that the City of Coquitlam ban the use of cosmetic pesticides, and be it further resolved that Council direct this, the newly formed Sustainability and Environmental Advisory Committee to make recommendations to Council on the implementation of such a ban. Thank you very Sorry. much. By Selena Robinson and Barry Lynch. Councillor Reed. Okay. Thank you. Anything further? Saying nothing. Motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Asmundson. Second by Councillor Nicholson to adjourn. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Consistent with our practices, we will allow a question period of up to 15 minutes. Questions are subject to a two minute time, time limit and there's no preamble, there's no speech, it's just a question for council or for st primarily for staff related to tonight's agenda. Are there any questions? Seeing none. Oh, please come forward. Jack. Good evening, council. My name is Jack Trumley. I'm at 2314 Sumter Drive. Item eight, it's very confusing sitting here as a member of the public. Is there any reason why um, we have to wait for Metro Vancouver under this RGS in terms of land use designation under conservation and recreation, their decision? Because it sounds like North Van has a whole different thing going on that they can actually produce condos and it says conservation and recreation. I don't know what the hell has to do with condos, no idea. So is there any way that we can take the leadership role as a city and present to Metro and say this is a maiden Coquitlam definition of what the land use designation is under conservation and recreation and make that amendment say this is going to be ours. Is there any reason why we can't do that? Well, you have the advantage that the chair of the technical committee for the um, RGS is uh, Mr. Our own Mr. McIntyre. Mr. McIntyre. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, <laughs> It's getting a little late in the game. Um, I think to making really um, substantive changes to definitions in the, in the RGS. Um, at this point, the RGS is out with the member municipalities for uh, review and comments back by March 22nd. Um, I, I believe what happened in the District of North Vancouver case, there was uh, some additional flexibility that was requested to accommodate the existing Grouse Mountain uh, ski facility, both with what's happening up on top of the mountain, given the, the ski resort, and at the base area. So that was, uh, uh, there was some um, elements added to give them the flexibility to recognize what there, exists there now. It seems to me everybody else is confused here as I am, in terms of city council as well. I, and I don't, and I understand, I understand that but we often send letters to provincial governments and liberals to say how we feel about as a city, our voice, our opinion, and it seems to me with Westwood, the people from Westwood Plateau and myself included who don't live there, but trying to understand this to make and take a leadership role to say, maybe we can't get anything done, but send a message to Metro and say, this is what we think would be the best designation of what conservation and recreation is and allow people at least to get that out there. To me, I mean, it may not have a, a, a leg to stand on, but it seems to me it's a nice step as a leadership to say, 
because I, and you all know when you want to confuse people and get things to happen, make it as confusing as possible. And where people don't understand, and then all of a sudden things start to happen and people don't realize it. This seems to be one of those things where if it's not simple and easy to understand, the people who live here don't, will never understand it, it'll go right over their head. So if we can make it as simple as possible, and if it's a mate in Coquitlam discussion, a paper to forward, and maybe some people take heed and start thinking about it. That's sort of what I'm saying. All right. Anyway, thank you. That, that is um, among the things we're trying to achieve. Anybody else? Thank you all.